Well, my friends, uh, thank you so much for coming again to look at the channel, uh, my channel, my YouTube channel, Life Stories, Grace Kansime. Yesterday, I gave you an introductory video of about three minutes, and thank you so much for coming to view, to read the story, and to be encouraged. Uh, today, I am going to ask you, uh, please, um, subscribe. Subscribe, it will mean so much to me, view, subscribe, and like. Doing that will mean a lot, the world to me, because as you grow, as you learn, I will also be growing in the YouTube um, the establishment. Uh, yesterday, my personal person uh, who was really concerned called me and he's like, why, why are you sharing your story? You see, some of us are keeping quiet and uh, we don't talk about those things because many people will get hurt. I want to make this very clear that I am not here to hurt anyone. Uh, I will not mention names. But the main reason why I did this channel is because uh, as a mother, I want my children to hear my story and I want them to know the reason why I protected them with my life. They know I can pull the whole earth, the whole world, just for them to be okay, just to be safe. They know I can bear anything, I can bear any trouble if it came my way. Thank God I didn't have to bear that trouble in my marriage. But if it was there, I could bear it just to make sure that my children grew up under my watch. Uh, and yes, they should talk. They should talk if such things came their way. I, after going through all this, I do not agree with a philosophy that someone has to keep quiet, that someone has to cover up. And then the pain goes on and on and attempt and it messes up with someone's character. I must warn you, young mothers and young girls, the upbringing of a child, the character of a child is formed between birth and six years old. If a child is going to be confident, it is that time. If the child is going to lose confidence, it is still that same time. If a child is going to be rebellious, mediocre, build walls around them, as parents, we build that character during that time. So, if there is something that you must learn, is that the early years of your child go a long way to determine who they are. As for me, my early years, born without an identity, my mother and father, as I mentioned to you, they met in school, they did what they did, and they, my mother didn't even know she was pregnant, and the man left. And she also left and went her way, only to get married to someone else a few months later when she was pregnant. I grew up, I was born in the family uh, of a naturally man. Who knew I belonged to him? And I went to northern Uganda. I stayed with him. By then he was in Mbarara actually. And then he took me to the north to stay with his parents. And they stayed with my mother and my baby sister in Mbarara, who unfortunately has passed on. And so I grew up knowing I was a naturally. Well, if that is not a shock, to many of you, then I don't know how to turn it. I remember my husband, when I was getting married, he came to me and 
um, he said, oh, someone told me you are not a Nyankole, you are Nacholi. I said, yes, I'm a Nacholi, because at that time I hadn't even known who I was. I didn't know I was a Nyankole. I knew I was a Nacholi whose father was killed by a mean while in Barara because he was an army man. And so I told him, yes. And he said, so who are your people? I said, I don't know them. Because while in Nacholi land, um, where I grew up, my mother kidnapped me from there. She was such a brave woman. She put her life on the line for me. And she brought me back to the home. But even at that age of nine, she didn't tell me who my parents were. She didn't tell me who my father was. She kept it to herself. And so I grew up as an orphan. <laughs> Life has its own challenges. I grew up knowing I was an orphan. And, uh, and they called me an orphan. I grew up with my grandparents not having uh, paternal relatives. And uh, I woke up one day only to be told uh, my grandparents were not my, my mother, they were not my father. I was an orphan and my mother had gotten married to another man. And uh, I faced life on my own. I faced life. Each day I woke up to take the goats to the field, alone in the bushes. I faced life every day, not sure whether I would survive to see the next day. It wasn't about uh, facing life, difficulties in the bushes. Wondering if snakes are going to eat you, if the lion is coming for me, if the tiger is coming for me. I actually grazed goats and I think they could even call my name. But by the grace of God, I survived. The snakes didn't eat me up. The, the animals didn't come for me. I didn't fall sick and die in the bushes. I can guarantee you when God has a special calling on your life, when God has put his finger on your life, you would even swim through the ocean and the sharks will run away from you. Indeed, I was not consumed. I did this uh, video to help the young women, the young girls, you may be in the situation that I am in. You don't even know who your parents are. You don't even know uh, why it is you who has to do the difficult things, the, the wrong things. You don't even know why it is you who is always making mistakes. Let me tell you, I made mistakes as a child. That at some point, everyone around me convinced me I was stupid. They convinced me I didn't have a brain, but I had porridge in my head. I was so traumatized. So traumatized that I made one mistake after another, after another, I broke cups, I broke plates, and for everything that I broke, I was beaten. I was beaten. Wow. Those memories, sometimes, they bring a lot of 
unfortunately, my mind has learned to block these memories. At this moment, I want to really thank my grandmother. She passed on uh, last month. Last month, July. She passed on in July 2020. She took me to church at the age of six. She held my hand and walked with me to uh, bazooko for gatherings and uh, we would praise and I would sing this song Amazing Grace and I found so much comfort in that song uh, it is that time that she took me to fellowship and I committed my life to Jesus that made a difference in my life and so even as I watched, watched the life closing on me and watched so many things that I could not understand as a child, nine years old, um, 13, 12 years old, even when I could not understand, I hung on to the fact that God cares for me and I am saved. And if I died, I could go to heaven. And so I persisted. In life. Um, and so as I watched my life, as I put together my thoughts regarding what I had passed through as a child, as a child I purpose to that time. Uh, I will cover my children with every drop of blood in my life. And later on, we will be sharing what it means to parent millennials. Millennials, these are children born um, in the late 90s and, and early 2000s up to now are the children who have their own unique challenges, but very deep challenges. And the character of your upbringing, um, the character of your upbringing, what shaped your upbringing is going to determine a lot on how you will be able to bring up these children safely. I take so much time talking to young women uh, who are doing bridal showers, uh, who are going to get married. I talk to young mothers. And in most of those uh, talks, I have gone with my children and they listen to what I talk to, to others because I want them to learn from the knowledge that I share with other people. And so today, my journey goes like this. I am born. I didn't know whether I was a Nyankore or a, an Achori. I didn't know whether I was an orphan or I had a father. I didn't know whether my grandparents were my parents or I would wake up one day and they would tell me I, I'm also not related to them. And so with all that, I have set the background for you. Wait for the next video and listen to what they call living in ashes. And uh, I will ask you again, please subscribe, like this video and make a comment. And uh, it will mean a lot to me when you do that. Subscribe, view and like. And uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.